This is my podcast, I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome. I think that I'm worth your time. And I'm kind of handsome. My mom says, please listen and please subscribe. At least listen to this episode. All right, guys. Well, I'm trying something different uh, for this episode. If you go to... Um, if you search Fans Not Experts on YouTube, or if you go to fansnotexperts.com and you click on our YouTube link, you'll see that uh, every other episode of Geek Mentality actually is just uh, put on YouTube as the audio clip. And that's all there is. You're just basically watching a video of, uh, of one photo and me talking. So I thought I'd try something a little different for this episode, see uh, what I can do with it, and actually uh, record this as a video while I'm driving, and uh, which is probably not safe. I'm not even sure if it's legal, but hands-free, so um, I'm going to actually put the video up, or try to put some kind of video up, and extract the audio for the regular podcast. So, I just picked my nose. So... Let's talk about Supergirl. That's uh, really what I what the focus of this episode is about. Now, obviously, I'm a little behind uh, with my episodes. I wanted to do Supergirl last week. Um, I did watch the finale, but I finally um, took the time because I just took my dog for a walk, and I have a few minutes. So let's talk about Supergirl. You know this show. I really do enjoy the show. I'm not going to lie. I enjoy the show. I, it, you know, I, there's an earlier episode of Geek Mentality where I talk about my love of CW shows. And really, it, it all stems back, well, I guess originally you could say Buffy with the WB. Uh, but it all really, but the real crux of it started with uh, Smallville. Um, and now we have a CW superhero universe with The Flash and Arrow all created by the same uh, production team, uh, I think Greg Berlanti. And he, this is also the same team that gives us Supergirl. The difference is Supergirl's on CBS. So that means that Supergirl gets a ton more viewers than the shows on, C, on CW does. But they actually don't get a great amount of viewers as far as CBS is concerned. So it's funny, if this show was on the CW and it had those numbers, it would be, uh, it would be mind-numbing, it would be in insane. But, it's on CBS, so you just, you, you, I, think it, I think it gets about 6 million people, which is unheard of on CW. But on CBS, they can do that, you know, pretty easy. Um, and here we have, on Mondays, 8 p.m., the first primetime slot of the week. We have a show that pulls no punches at being a comic book show. And they gave us the Martian Manhunter. They're giving us uh, all kinds of, of Kryptonians. They're giving us, I mean, they, they basically, they, they gave us a, a Brainiac there, whatever they, they call her. They've done so much over-the-top superhero stuff that it's just, in one word, it's just awesome that they're doing this. It's awesome that we have this outlet um, for a giant comic book show and it's on prime time the number one network it's insane and I hope that they, they uh, CBS brings it back I assume they will but then you wonder if they don't will they get a second life on the CW and if that happens what happens to the show itself because CBS gives the show a budget unlike anything the CW has. The CW does great with what it does, but CBS, which, you know, it's all kind of the same company, but CBS can pump more money into the show, which gives, gives it a bigger feeling, but it still feels like those same types of CW shows, which, guess what? I'm 100% okay with. Supergirl, okay, let's talk about the actual Supergirl. Melissa Benoist, I believe, or I think that's how you pronounce her name. 
How can you not love her? I mean, she's as cute as a button. She um, she plays that. Oh, gee, I'm you know I've got so many problems, and then she's uh, beautiful, and she puts on the Supergirl outfit, or when she does the uh, red kryptonite, and she's evil Supergirl. You know, um, can't say enough about her. Uh, you know, the show. Sometimes I it, it's, it has slight eye rolling, slight eye rolling, but it is still a lot of fun. And it has that, it gives you that CW kind of young adult angst that you get, uh, relationship stuff. It does all that stuff, which is fine. All these shows do that. Um, you know, being the fact that I'm in the last few months of my 30s, you think maybe I would have outgrown these things, but you're wrong. I'm at a red light right now, so I can look at you in the eye. Um, look, I really what I wanted to talk about was the finale of the show and one thing that bugged me uh, they made this big deal about Supergirl flying into space and that she could die now forgive me if I'm wrong but we've seen Superman go into space for years years and years but you know in this world uh, Superman is kind of weak you know so yeah, you're not going I'm not letting you go you son of a sorry Road range, um, you know. In this in this show, the world is almost ending, and Superman can't even help because, you know, he gets uh, he got all whacked up because he's been on Earth since he was a baby. So his brain, they did this whole thing with brain manipulation and uh, brainwashing, and apparently Superman has been on Earth long enough that his brain has tuned in to the uh, waves of. Earthlings, so that he too can be uh, brainwashed. So that was a um, an interesting way of, or I guess a, a clever way of them, or a clever quote unquote way of them trying to write Superman out of the show, giving a reason why he's not, you know, actually there, or why he's not saving the day. Um, because honestly, every time Supergirl gets in trouble, Superman should just swoop in and say, yo, I'm Superman. I'm here, yo. I'm going gonna, uh, to save the day. But that doesn't happen. And it was funny that, you know, even when people started snapping out of it, they, they kept Superman still kind of in a catatonic state. Um, they showed his foot. We saw Superman's foot. It's pretty exciting. Um, look, it's funny. I have a friend who... He's a few years older than me. You know, he's a dad. He's got four kids. One kids in college, uh, kids in you know in, in grammar school, and he he's the only person I email. He loves Supergirl. I think he's kind of in love with Supergirl, uh, which how could you not be? But he he, he loves the show, and I he's, he I'm like you're still with it, even with all these over the top comic book things they're doing. He's still with the show. And that's cool because there's hope for uh, you know people out there. I think of my in-laws. They, um, I feel like they just watch whatever's on CBS because uh, they're watching the news. And I, ha I think that happens a lot with those people. They're watching CBS news and it just they just keep whatever's on is on. So I wonder if they've actually watched Supergirl before. And I can picture my father like going, I just say, it's stupid. It's uh, Superman, the, the super lady. I don't know, it's weird, it's wacky. That's crazy. It's dumb. Um, then again, they could be watching it. My, my in-laws watch Lost. And if you're, spoiler alert, when I mentioned, like, oh, you know how Hurley can see dead people? They're like, huh? What? Or Hurley can see people? They had no idea. So I don't know how much a loss my in-laws actually got. But I'm kind of going off the point. I only have so many more minutes. I took the long way to try to get home. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm glad that Supergirl exists. It is not in any way groundbreaking. It is not in any way spectacular. But it's just really good uh, fun. It's, it's, it does not shy away at all from being comic booky. It is over the top with their comic book references. I mean, they go all out with, with things. Like I said, they, they, they brought us to Mars. They have Martian Manhunter on CBS at 8 o'clock on Mondays. Crazy. So the, the finale uh, ends with, I think it's 
her ship showing up. Also, yeah, when when so she's in space, uh, almost dying, and her sister flies the ship the ship up. Okay, I rolled my eyes at that. That was, um, you know, a little, a little silly. But um, I guess the finale, the final scene was her ship lands, and she goes over and opens it up and says, "Holy shit!" or something like that. So what's inside the ship? What's in the ship? I'm thinking it's Supergirl. I'm thinking it's a, it's the younger version of her. And it's some weird time travel wackadoodle thing. And uh, that's my that's my guess. That she landed again. This is actually not the same ship. This is uh, this is her ship from, you know, 15, 16, 20 years ago, whatever it is. Um, so... I really didn't talk as much about Supergirl as I thought I would. Um, you know, they, they, they give you that CW kind of team of people where, you know, she's got the... Uh, a lot of people know who Supergirl is, too, which I kind of say I always love when the superhero gets revealed to people and they find out. From 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 Smallville to even, even Chuck, you know, he's kind of a superhero, to Flash, Arrow, when people find out who the guy is... Or who the uh, who actual you know the secret identity is um, always get a kick out of that. So uh, you know what else can I say except I hope Supergirl comes back. It's not my favorite show. There were times where I had three or four lined up on the DVR, but there's enough there that really makes me hope for a second season. As a comic book fan, as a comic book nerd. As a superhero fan, uh, it excites me that this kind of thing is out there, and it's not just kind of pushed away on a, on a fourth network, the CW or fifth network, I guess, uh, CW. Um, and I guess I cared enough about it to make it my first ever video podcast. Now, of course, if you listen through the uh, through a podcast app, you're just getting the audio, and I'm trying to project because I have no idea how my phone records audio. But, that being said, thank you for listening. My name is Mike. You can find me online at Geek Mentality. I have a website, fansnotexperts.com, where I try to talk about some sports, movies, and television. I have a section on comic books that I don't update enough. And wrestling. I'm a big wrestling fan. If you are a wrestling fan, we have another podcast called The Wrestlefania. You can find it at fansnotexperts.com. You can find it at our YouTube channel. Um, and it's me and my cousin Brandon talking about wrestling. We usually do it about once a month, kind of in time for the WWE pay-per-views. Um, but, yeah, that's all I really have to say. What I'm hoping for is that a year from now, um, when I'm watching the video, it's like, oh, wow, look, he doesn't have a second chin. Working on that. Um, so maybe I'll use this as a little time capsule. Day. Wow, his head is not as perfectly round as it used to be i'm kind of rambling right now but again you can find us on itunes geek mentality you can find us at the website i said fans not experts at fans not experts is our twitter we're on google play music now where you can find our podcast there stitcher and when i say our i mean it's me who the hell else am i talking about um but if let's say you do listen to us and you have downloaded us me uh do me a favor Go to iTunes, leave me a review. If you l listen through something else that allows you to give reviews, I'd love that too. Maybe a comment on YouTube or a comment on uh, on the, the the website. Anything. Anything to let me know that people are out there. All right? Now, I'm going to stop recording because that's the end of the episode. i got to take my dog in. See, there's my dog. Dog. Oh, hey, Clay. Clay, ready, come on. Oh, there he is, waking up. We went for a walk. All right, that's the end of the episode. So, hey, I tried some video. Not bad. I gotta look right in the camera. Thank you for listening, or watching, depending on what you're doing. Fans.express.com, baby. Fans not experts. This is my podcast, I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it, and I think you should listen and subscribe, cause I'm kinda funny.